Hello and uh, welcome everyone. We will take some time to look at the remaining two chapters in our course, Believer's Authority. Uh, this is chapter 14 uh, and uh, chapter 15 that we are yet to cover. So we'll just um, go through the insights from these two chapters. So the first uh, chapter that we're going to discuss here is chapter 14 that talks about exercising authority over territories and regions. And then we will talk about the perimeters for spiritual, exercising spiritual authority. So uh, when we speak of exercising authority over territories and regions. We have already spoken about spiritual warfare. We have spoken about spiritual warfare even in the course on prayer and intercession. So we do have an idea. So what we are saying is, how do we exercise spiritual authority so far in the deliverance of individuals? Uh, we have we have spoken of exercising authority, um, you know, at a, a personal level and um, casting out demons from people individually and so on. But uh, if we want to see deliverance uh, or if we want to see the power of God overcoming demonic uh, uh, works in a larger uh, territory, uh, how do we really exercise our authority? That's the question that we're asking. So exercising authority over regions would mean authority exercised over uh, city, over nations, over communities. And um, uh, the reason why we can do this is because we know that the Lord Jesus, he told us that he has all authority on uh, he in heaven and on earth and that he gives it to us his disciples so he carries all the authority and even right now we know that he's seated in the heavenly places on the right hand of the father and uh, that's the place of authority and we as believers we are seated with christ in the heavenly places and so when the head of the body exercises authority so can the body uh, we too as the body of the lord jesus can exercise authority over demonic powers uh, now we as the body of christ are here on the earth and um, we must recognize that we can execute uh, that authority and uh, also you know because of the position uh, that we have in Christ and the delegated authority that we have received. And we've seen the dimensions of authority that we carry. A reality is that as a, um, uh, you know, in, in the spiritual realm, there is incredible authority that the church of the Lord Jesus carries. Uh, and uh, which is why you know, we have seen you know, what Jesus said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the picture that the, the New Testament, the Bible presents to us about the church is that it's a strong spiritual entity. It's a powerful spiritual entity and that uh, it's not a feeble or a weak spiritual entity. And uh, therefore, when the church arises and when we say the church, we mean you and I, we mean uh, the believers. And when we arise, we take our position and we serve God in what he has called us to do. Surely we will see uh, city transformation. We will see people delivered, not just one or two individuals, but, you know, the entire city being impacted for the glory of God. And that's what we are looking at you know, when we speak of um a spiritual authority being exercised over a larger region, city transformation. Now, how is the city transformation going to take place? A couple of points uh, regarding that. When all the believers are of the city are involved in city transformation, because it's a large scale, um, uh, you know, change that we are looking into, and uh, therefore it can't just be one person doing it, but the believers together must rise up to this call. Uh, secondly, we see that uh, there has got to be a strategic 
movement or uh, a strategic way in which things are done so when uh, we hear from god and we plan and we do things with wisdom and the leading of the spirit there will be a powerful impact uh, thirdly uh, when we talk about city transformation uh, it's about spiritual effort okay uh, because yes we will engage in natural ways practical ways be strategic uh, and uh, you know utilize uh, all the resources around us but beyond this city transformation is definitely rooted uh, in you know the spiritual uh, transformation of uh, the people and there is a spiritual effort from our side that needs to go in so you know uh, let's talk a little bit more about the city transformation or this impact over large regions and how we are going to see this manifest so a couple of pointers along uh, these lines we'll talk about um, four different points and we'll go over them one by one the first one is for us as the body of christ to live the gospel so uh, while we proclaim the gospel which is our second point uh, we must also live the gospel jesus taught us to be salt and light and it is when believers live their lives um, uh, salt the, the property of salt is uh, that it preserves and it um, uh, you know gives a taste of flavor to the food and we as believers must be that section of the community that we live in where we uh, be because of our presence righteousness is preserved and uh, because of our presence there is that godly flavor to the community and we are also light you know we we bring light we bring truth to the people around us and that's the manner in which god calls us to live so living out the christian life the believing life uh, is as important as proclaiming or sharing the gospel with people uh the bible uh, has parables of our lord jesus when he talked about you know the um kingdom of god being like uh, leaven and how it you know it it works through the entire batch so similarly we as believers uh we've already seen that god has given us incredible spiritual influence now when we live out our lives what will happen is that there will be a transformation of culture we may look at ourselves and uh, state that we are so small or that we have so such little influence however what jesus said is that you know the kingdom of god it it is like leaven so before you know it we can touch culture we can change culture we can influence culture and transform culture and this uh, is something we see in matthew chapter 13 verse 33 uh, you know the the uh, uh, point about the leaven and uh, in matthew chapter 13 there's also this comparison of uh, people of god or believers being like uh, the good seed who have been planted and we as good seed of the kingdom can also impact the culture around us so uh, live out that life and uh, you know uh, put on the uh, right breastplate of uh, uh, righteousness and uh, live that holy life before people repent unto the lord for things that are being done wrong and, and that is so very important when it comes to impacting the city secondly uh, we definitely have to share the gospel the bible teaches us you know in romans 1 we see that the gospel is the power of god um we know that the gospel is uh, spiritual and so when we share the gospel to someone there's going to be a spiritual impact on their lives and we must believe in the power of the gospel and that will bring about transformation and we can of course find innovative ways to share the gospel and uh, opportunities to share the gospel uh, thirdly demonstrate the gospel how do we demonstrate the gospel we 
uh, can do it in many different ways. Uh, we we can do it through um, compassionate acts, righteous acts, uh, and of course, by the demonstration of the power of God. We see that the Lord Jesus, he carried compassion in his heart and we see he did many miracles. And uh, that's what the world around us needs to see for us to flow in compassion. And as Acts 1.8 says, when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, we will be witnesses uh, to the power of God. And uh, so, you know, as we manifest the works of God, Jesus also said in John 14 and verse 12 that we shall do greater works than these. Uh, and, and, you know, we can engage in those supernatural uh, works of God by healing people, uh, by uh, praying for miracles and miracles happen in people's lives, deliverances that people uh, experience. And in this way, you know, uh, they are impacted and it makes a difference towards transformation. And the fourth one is to pray, intercede and exercise authority. You know, prayer and intercession, we uh, have talked about it. You know, we can continue to cry out to the Lord. We can repent on behalf of the people. We can pray for the needs of the people. Uh, we can um, uh, worship God. We can praise God, which establishes a godly atmosphere over that land or that region. And exercising authority uh, simply means uh, what we have studied in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, where uh, the Lord Jesus calls us to bind and lose. So we can do that uh, to to come against the demonic strongholds. And so whenever we see you know, things happening around us, um, this is the way to engage in spiritual warfare, to live the right life. Uh, and uh, for example, if we see idolatry around us, how do we, how do we um, pray into city transformation or work towards city transformation? Uh, we will firstly live out a righteous life meaning that we will not engage in idolatry uh, and as intercessors we will repent on behalf of those who are engaged in um, uh, idolatry and we will also begin to uh, pray intercede and exercise our authority in going against the demonic powers that are uh, pushing people into this kind of a practice. So this is the way in which one can work towards city transformation. So what are some uh, pitfalls when we speak of spiritual warfare that we can avoid? The first one is to be overly concerned about what Satan is doing, you know, what the devil is doing. Uh, and so what happens is as believers, we become more demon conscious, uh, which is not at all required. We are called to be aware of the tactics of uh, the devil. But we must be God conscious and conscious of the fact that we now have authority that has been given to us by Christ and that the church is a powerful entity and we can exercise our authority. And the second point here or pitfall here that one must avoid is to become overly concerned about spiritual mapping. Spiritual mapping is um, to know what kind of demonic uh, principalities and powers rule over different regions. Some information about this is helpful. Uh, and how, how do these demonic strongholds take over regions because of the practices of people in that region because of their words. You know, these principalities have stationed themselves over that land. But we can now engage in uh, uh, exercising our spiritual authority. You know, we can live a righteous life, uh, pray, intercede for the people. We can bind these demonic um, spirits. Uh, and you know we can also establish an atmosphere of the presence of God through prayer, praise and worship. So in this way, you know, we battle it out and uh, one must not become, you know, very, very conscious of spiritual mapping. Um, and 
the other pitfall is when we have fear of backlash meaning we think that whenever we are going against the enemy he will come after us well uh, again this is something that we have clarified in the earlier uh, sessions and we said that a believer need not worry about this because it's fear which opens the door to satan's attacks now if you are not fearing if you are confident in the word of the lord we know what jesus said that he gave us you know the authority he gave us the power over uh, demonic uh, over demons and that nothing by any means will hurt us and there is another scripture from 1 john chapter 5 and verse 18 that says that you know uh, one who is of the lord keeps himself and the evil one done, does not touch him so when we have the confidence uh, that god is with us he is protecting us preserving us we must not let fear open the door to the enemy so as god's people every territory you know the lands that uh, each one of us is from and what a privilege uh, we have people from different nations on this course uh, but wherever god has called us that territory or that region uh, can be a region that is transformed by the power of God. And an encouraging thought is from the life of Caleb. Caleb in the Old Testament, we read about him in the book of Joshua, uh, where you know he takes land that was promised to him. So Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 15, we see that a land is given to him, uh, uh, which was actually an inherit which was actually a land of the giants. So that place is called Kirjat Arba or the land of the giants uh, and you know obviously that's that's not a great thing because Caleb was given a land which he then had to transform uh, to make it livable and make it a friendly place but uh, how beautiful to see that the place called Kirchat Arba or the land of the Anakim giants was transformed into a land called Hebron and we've all heard this name Hebron and Hebron simply means a place of association confederacy and friendship so Hebron uh, is a friendly place and that's the transformation that we're talking about so the land that was given to Caleb went from being the land uh, or or the hostile land of the giants to uh, a friendly place to the extent that it became a city of refuge where people would go uh, you know those who were convicted um, and, and were guilty actually would run to this city and they would live there uh, till a, a, a time would come when you know they would be released uh, so or a favorable season and so this gives us great encouragement that places can be transformed giants can be um, you know toppled and uh, strongholds can be uprooted transformation can be accomplished and uh, we see that in the life of Caleb and this was also possible because Caleb though he was old in years there were certain qualities about him that are inspiring he's a man of courage a man of faith a man who trusted God and who exercised his authority in that sense to dislodge giants to transform form an entire city uh, and uh, today we who are believers who are born again filled with the spirit of god uh, have you know so much more uh, uh, so much more that we are carrying that we can in the spiritual sense bring about a transformation a spiritual transformation for the better in the places that we uh, are positioned so that's uh, a little bit from our chapter here, chapter uh, 14. And uh, let's now look at the last chapter here, which talks about the perimeters of our spiritual authority. Uh, again, we have already touched upon uh, this content several times. Uh, so I'm just going to go over it once again uh, as a reminder. So whenever we exercise spiritual authority let's recognize the boundaries you know, obviously we cannot go against god's plan for the human race uh, whatever god has established by exercising our spiritual authority we are not going to 
be able to change it we cannot obviously violate god's written word uh, because that is the ultimate authority uh, by which we function uh, thirdly we must be aligned to the mind of god in a particular situation so let's say you know god has an intention to do something and we are trying to exercise our authority to make another thing happen that will not work out which is why we must pray seek the lord and uh, ask god what his heart is about a certain matter then when it comes to the will of other human beings while we do carry spiritual influence and natural influence uh, you know we can counsel we can pray for them uh, and we can do all of those things we can never control their will uh, and we can never manipulate them uh, to do something and so our authority will not work to manipulate the will of others and the fifth one is that we cannot force a gift of work gift or work of god into the heart of unbelief we see that even jesus when there was unbelief he was unable to do uh the mighty acts of god in those places and even now you know when people are unbelieving it becomes so hard for uh, us to exercise authority and maybe you know exercise authority to get somebody saved or push them into salvation those things uh cannot be done so these are the boundaries uh why why is it helpful because we know uh how we can use our authority and function uh to see it work effectively so uh, a, a section here um is about uh, failures while exercising authority uh is it possible that we can have uh failed experiences well we can because we see that even the disciples of jesus in matthew 17 when they tried to cast out a demon they were unsuccessful they reached out to jesus and they asked him like why is it jesus that we couldn't cast out the demon and then you know jesus um helped them understand that it's it was about faith uh faith was lacking in their approach and so when it comes to exercising authority now uh, if we see failure uh, of one is yes failure could happen but we can learn from it we can we can see that there are many different reasons why failures can occur uh, one of course is the lack of faith uh, we may not understand the mind of god and maybe we are doing something which is not what god wants uh, maybe there is sin uh, which is unknown unconfessed that has to be dealt with or um, in the case of deliverance we've uh, already spoken about you know dedications that are not broken pledges or allegiances um, you know things that that have to uh, first be removed before the uh, uh, deliverance can fully manifest so these are all matters why there can be failure and uh, you know sometimes we just end up dealing with the symptoms and not necessarily the root cause of that problem so then you know we must ask the question what is the actual issue and address that issue uh then not closing all entry points we spoke about entry points that is something to look into and even after having done all this uh, if there are still failures then we really have to seek god uh, to ask him what we what exactly we must do and where we could have gone wrong so uh, let's also know that uh you know there are sometimes that we may not get the answer or we may not have all the answers and it sh we should be okay with that uh because you know after all maybe there are some things that god does not want to to reveal to us uh, and uh, it should be okay for us to not have all the answers it's just that we uh, try to see the reasons for failure so that we can learn through them and uh, you know we can grow through them and another important thing is to never 
uh, point fingers at, at other believers and ministers of God to put them down when they experience failures. Just let's learn from each other's mistakes and let us grow uh, so that we can take the work of the kingdom forward. Now, when failures happen, you know, we've been stating this time and again that the truth of God remains the same. The truth never changes. But our experience, of course, can change. And so when we press in to the truth of God's word, we will see, um, you know, more victories manifesting. And, uh, uh, you know, that will be an encouragement. Always keep the Lord Jesus as a pattern and a model before us. And remember that he has won the victory for us on the cross of Calvary. Uh, Satan is defeated and we have complete mastery over the devil. So with that final thought, we come to the end of um, our course on Believer's Authority. Thank you so much for being a part of this course and uh, truly believe that this has been more than just an academic learning and that it will help us walk in authority in our everyday life and see the power and the glory of God. So let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the work that he has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for bringing us, Lord, to the understanding that we have mastery over Satan, that Satan is defeated, O oh God. Lord, we just pray that, Lord, each one of us will, will arise and, Father, we will see the power of God, um, taking over not just in our personal lives of God, but uh, in the lives of people that you give us an opportunity to minister to. And Father, we also pray, Lord, that uh, uh, let the power of God transform communities, cities, regions, nations. And uh, Lord, uh, we, we pray, may the glory of the Lord fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. We thank you once again, O oh God, for the uh, the power in your word. And we thank you for the opportunity to, to learn, O oh God, your word. We give you praise. And Father, I just pray a blessing upon all our students. I pray a blessing upon their families. Pray, God, that you continue to increase them in every aspect of their lives, oh God, and especially in their spiritual lives, Father God, that, uh, uh, Lord, uh, each one, Lord, will be positioned uh, to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives and that the grace and the gift of God over their lives will be stirred up. And God, that uh, each one of oh God will, will work towards the extension of your kingdom and the building of your house. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, all the best with the assignments and uh, looking forward to meeting all of you. Uh, you know, hopefully all of you can continue with us in the second year courses. And so uh, we'll meet you then. God bless you. Take care. Thank you. And bye for now.